Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on rise of native press in India. This lecture is part of your paper on news and society. This lecture focuses on highlighting the factors that played the principal role in shaping the native press in India. Also, the lecture deals with debates revolving around the regulatory policies introduced by the British colonial administration that informed the subsequent formation of the native press in India. This lecture also dwells on the factors that resulted in anti-colonial feelings due to the arbitrary policies imposed by the colonial administration amongst the native press and also aggravated a sentiment of anti-colonial feeling across India. Rise of native press in India The colonial regime in India at the outset realized the dynamics of press and became increasingly insecure in terms of its growth and expansion. As a result, the regime began to incept New Year ways to curb the freedom of press in India, especially the native press, which had the advantage of being vernacular and critical towards the colonial regime's conduct. 1807 was a time period when the governor in council banned public meetings. The regime wanted to contain and control any form of information which would be critical towards it and its performance. Such extreme actions and restrictions on the press freedom led to the growth of underground press. The underground press in order to mobilize forces and damage the colonial regime began printing pamphlets. These pamphlets which were published did not bear the name of the author or the printer. This provided immense scope for anonymity and security. This was the first sign of protest against the colonial regime's stringent rules and regulations. However, the colonial government tried its best to make necessary amendments in regulations requiring all the presses to publish names of the printer on all the literature printed. These steps were taken to keep a tab on the unregulated vernacular press in India. 1813 to 1818 saw many significant developments in press. The first Indian newspaper, the Bengal Gazette, was started by Gangadhar Bhattacharyji, which only lasted for a year. The publication of newspapers on Sundays was started with a condition that all the work should be finished by Saturday night and no work should be done in the late hours. This was done to ensure that the kind of information being published would be under constant surveillance and no new information on any currently occurring event would exist which might instigate the Indian population. The colonial government feared that since the circulation of newspapers would be high on Sundays, the control over information on such days would be highly pivotal. However, the apprehensions of the Metcalf Act of 1835 on the native press could be seen during the War of Independence, that is 1857. It was believed that the growth of native press was the prime reason for instigating the rebel and Sifoi mutiny against the colonial regime. Native periodicals of that time consi consisted of political and social questions. The government was to involved in making laws against unjust social and religious practices of the Indians and also encouraged these laws through native press that hurt the sentiments of the people. It was in a state of shock by this movement attempted by the Indians. This made them develop 
animosity towards the native Indian press. When John Adam was made the chief secretary, his acting uh, chief secretary, William Butterworth Bailey would perform his duties in Adam's absence. He had a conflict with uh, Heatley, the proprietor editor of Morning Post newspaper. Bailey wanted to exclude few paragraphs from newspaper as per the pre-censorship rule but Healthy refused but, but Hately refused by saying that the press regulations were only meant for Europeans in India whereas he was an Indian native as his father was European subject and his mother was a native Indian. Bailey's example showed that press laws were powerless dealing with Indian born pressmen. This freedom allowed and paved the way for operating printing presses in India. As a result, the underground press, which was controlled by native Indians, enjoyed some form of freedom due to this loophole in colonial legalities. However, such press agencies had to treat very carefully while publishing stories which reflected the regime in bad light. And Rajan states that Warren Hastings did not favor any action which aimed at limiting the growth of the press. He believed that providing favorable conditions to the press in India would help in creating a positive image of the colonial regime and would also help in creating a more sensitive public through greater circulation of information. As a result, instead of reforming the existing rules, he altogether abolished the pre-censorship law and left the responsibility of censorship of information on the editors of the paper. The editors were instructed not to publish any material that would affect the authority of government. Regulations to this effect were issued on August 1890. Now this reform was a very significant development for pushing the growth of native press in India. The vernacular press played a promising role in providing the momentum and leadership in political discussions which were noteworthy in colonial India, which were not worthy in colonial India. The importance of newspapers during British regime is spreading awareness about social and political activities and criticizing the government policies related to the public affair was undeniable. The criticizing attitude of the press was seen as a threat for the stronghold of imperial government. As a result, the colonial state responded to the vernacular press by imposing different types of regulatory policies, although some of the policies were not anti-press and focused on providing it the opportunities to grow. Since the newspapers and other printed texts carried different messages to their readers, they created awareness in the society, both positive and negative about the colonial state. The society in turn expressed its diverse opinions through newspapers and they in turn became the mediators of the public opinion to the colonial state. They were used as tools to measure and understand the nature of Indian public. It also helped the administrators of that time to shape their policies according to the public's needs. The native press played an important role in making the public conscious about the regime's atrocities and by reminding them of their responsibilities as active citizens and patriots towards their country. Because of these traits within the native press, it was constantly kept under surveillance by the British regime. The vernacular press played a critical role in shaping the alternative political sphere within the country, which gradually resulted in initiating the anti-colonial attitude against the British regime. 
given below is a list of newspapers which were affected by the British policies for vernacular press. In the case of Bengali press, the Anand Bazar Patrika, started by Sri Brinal Kanti Ghosh, enjoyed the largest circulation for any daily newspaper in any language. The Bengali Weekly and the Atma Sakti were started in 1923 as associate publications with the forward but were shut down in 1929 due to the heavy damages awarded by the High Court against them for publishing defamatory statements about the East India Railway. In the case of Gujarati press, Ras Kuftar and Jami Jamshed were highly famous for their critical approach. The Gujarati Punch, published from 1901 to 1950 from Ahmedabad and the Sanjwarthman and the Sanjwarthman Bombay's influential evening paper which continued uninterrupted for 48 years from 1902. Gandhiji's influence on Gujarati journalism was palpable soon after he took over the Navjeevan from Sri Indulal Yajnik and converted it from a monthly to a weekly where he preached in simple yet forceful language about his philosophy of truth, non-violence and civil disobedience. In the case of Hindi newspapers, two papers started in, two papers started in 1877, outlasted the Bharat Mitra, a weekly which continued its publication till 1937 and the Hindi Pradeep, a monthly edited by Bal Krishna Bhatt, the father of Hindi political journalism. Hindi Kesri, 1907, a Hindi version of Tilak's Marathi paper. The Karma Yogi, 1910, which took its cue from Aurobindo Ghosh. The Karma Yogi and the Abhayude, 1907, sponsored by Madan Mohan Malviye, the Pratab, 1913, and the Gyan Shakti 1916 were all newspapers which focused on the political aspects of the country. Moving on to the Canada Press, the only weekly paper in Canada known as Karnatak Vaibha was started in 1892 in Bijapur, in Dharwar, the Raj Hausna, a small daily was in existence from 1885 to 1922. Hukrikar and Sri R. R. Divakar started together a press and a weekly paper known as the Karmavir in 1921. The weekly Samayukta Karnatak started by Sri B. N. Dutter, converted into Delhi in 1933. Most of these nationalist journals were prosecuted for their strong criticism of the government during the days of the non-cooperation movement they attained the highest circulation. All the journals of Kannada, especially in Bombay and Karnataka, were advocates of extreme views in Indian politics. They helped in strengthening the anti-colonial feeling against the British regime. In the case of the Malayalam newspapers, the Malayalam Manorma of uh, Kotiam was one of the leading dailies of Kerala. It was founded by Kandati Vargisi, Mapilai in last decade of 19th century. Kaina Kamudi started in 1905, published news, views and correspondence in all verses. The struggle for independence brought into being a number of dailies during the 1920s. The most important daily was Matrabhumi, which started as a tri-weekly in 1923. It commanded the largest sale in Kerala. The paper was founded by K. Madhuvan Nair and P. Achutan, who gave up their practices as lawyers in Calcutta to join the non-cooperation movement. Finally, in the case of the Marathi press in February 1849, Danyan Prakash was started by Krishna G. Trimbak Rannade as a weekly and in 1904, it was converted into a daily. Mahadev Gobind Rannade himself started Hindu Prakash in January 1862 and continued till 1924. Other Marathi language newspapers were 
Rashtramata in the first decade of 20th century by S. K. Damle. However, it fell victim to the press act of 1910. The following acts were introduced during 1908 to 1947, which aimed at regulating the native Indian press newspaper. Native Indian Press Newspaper Act 1908, the Indian Press Act 1910, the Government of India Act 1919, the Indian Press Ordinance 1930, Indian Press Act 1931, Foreign Relations Act 1932, Indian State Act 1932, Indian States Act 1934 and again in 1943. The Defame of India Act and Rules in 1939, the Criminal Procedure Court Sections 99A to 99A added by the Amendment Act 1922. In December 1903, the colonial government sought to amend the Indian Official Secret Act of 1889 with the object of placing civil matters on a level with the naval and military. The Anglo-Indian press was won with the Indian press in its opposition to this measure but the cleavage between the two sections of the press became more marked than ever before during the Swadeshi movement of 1905 to 1908. The partition of Bengal agitated the Indian public which was motivated by press. To curb its proliferation, imperial government brought the newspaper's Incitement of Offence Act, 1908. If any newspaper was found inciting offences like crimes of murder or any act of violence, this act would put an end to the existence of the very newspaper. Even the police was empowered to attack the printing press and issue warrants before the order was made absolute. Due to these oppressive measures, dailies like the Yugantar, the Sandhya and the Bande Matram stopped publication. The split in the Indian National Congress in Surat in December 1907 led to the parting of the ways between liberals and nationalists in Bengal. Part of the press had adopted a style of writing which led the government to fear that it might end up in aiding the development of what they considered as a country-wide seditious movement. The anarchical ideas were undoubtedly gaining ground largely as a result of discontent over the partition of Bengal. They decided that fresh legislation should be introduced to meet what the government of Bengal considered to be an extremely threatening situation. This legislation was embodied in the Press Act of 1910, which empowered the government to demand security from any newspaper. Almost 350 printing presses were penalized under this Act. Securities worth £40,000 were demanded from newspapers. Because of the clause of security deposits, more than 130 newspapers failed to initiate their business. As a result of the application of this act, until 1913, a number of newspapers had to close down because they were unable to pay the security demanded. According to the Press Association of India, in a memorandum on the operations of the act, the total number of printing presses and newspapers which were old and operational and were identified through this act accounted to around 991. Out of that, 286 were cases of warning. The rest, 705 were cases of demanding heavy securities and four features. Thereof, by executing orders, whenever the government thought any publication was objectionable. Over 173 new presses and 129 new newspapers were stifled at their birth owing to the demand of the security which they could not complete. The effect of the act on old presses had been even more striking. In the year 1970, 18 out of 22 newspapers ceased publication immediately after demand for security. Similarly, during the same period out of ATT, 
out of 88 old printing presses security was demanded from majority of them owing to the mere printing of some publications which the executive took objection to as a result nearly 40 had to close down owing to the heavily penalty involved a demand was made to the government of india to repeal the press act of 1910 the secretary to the state took the initiative and earlier objections to certain provisions of the act were considered but they were later postponed the government of india act 1919 was passed and under heavy pressure from all quarters of the nationalist movement some initiative were underway to amend the press act of 1910 but that did not happen nevertheless the press vigorously participated in building the struggle for freedom it went on to expose the atrocities of the british raj and inspired the masses to move and fight for independence in 1923 shri ghansham das birla sponsored the arjun from delhi but the editor was sentenced to imprisonment soon after and a few months later the paper was called upon to pay a security of rupees 10000 under the press ordinance despite all the extreme steps taken by the colonial government the native indian press was successful in developing the feeling of nationalism patriotism and rationality within the common public which ultimately resulted in triggering of various anti colonial movements such as the non cooperation movement spearheaded by mahatma gandhi let us now sum up what we have learned in this lecture we trace the evolution of native press in india starting from its inception during the repressive years of british colonial rule taking various acts passed by the imperial government into account we built a narrative showing the contestations happening between the vernacular press entrepreneurs and the governing itself we saw how the government formulated regulations in order to keep the possibility of a native uprising at bay but could not do much to harm the popularity and dampen the significance of the vernacular press it is hoped that after listening to this lecture students will have a clarity about the factors that were responsible for shaping of the native press in india and the role it played in developing anti colonial feeling towards the british regime for more details please read the e text of this lecture and refer to the extended reading list for further study into the subject please do attempt all the questions given in the end thank you